Wait, uh, no, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> I thought this video was gonna be boring. <laughs> How strong are swages on wire rope? I'm Bobby and I have been working uh, building challenge courses and zip lines for the last year. And we do a lot of connections like this. This is a zinc plated copper sleeve and you can use it to make an eye or to join two cables together. And you use a hydraulic crimping compression tool to force the material into the grooves in the wire rope. They don't hold if you don't uh, crimp them. Apparently, that's an important step. Other than sleeves, you can use one of these U-clips to terminate your cable. And since horses were the main mode of transportation, when cables started getting used, they said, don't saddle a dead horse. But we'll get into that later. This is a 3 8 cable. Uh, this is seven by 19, which means there are seven bundles of 19 little strands. What's this rated to? 14,400 pounds. That is crimped really bad. Let's find out how strong these are. We'll start with a control sample. This is quite close to how the manufacturer of these sleeves uh, recommends you do it. The exceptions from that are they would like a little bit more wire rope sticking out so they can be sure that it's entirely engaged with the sleeve. But on both of these, the wire rope goes all the way to the end of the sleeve. sounded strong. Oh, it came out. It's not that warm. Oh, that is. <laughs> <laughs> we started to see some breakage here and then it came out of the swage. When we were testing the swages for dog bones, like homemade dog bones, often we had failure here. You had breaking the crimp. Yeah. This is the termination scheme that my company uses. They add an aluminum sleeve here uh, the main purpose of that is to ensure that there is enough tail sticking out and it covers up the tail, which when crimped tends to splay out like this and give lots of little sharp things that cut people as they go by. So do you think that adds any strength? We're going to test it. <laughs> okay, that's why we're here. <laughs> I think we'll have a different failure mode than on the control. This is loud. So our failure was in the first compression here of the aluminum. Wow, it broke in the swage. <laughs> when we tie knots and ropes, they break in the knots. When you pinch the crap out of a wire, imagine that, it breaks in the swage. Uh, very different result than the last test, but a very similar number. Yeah, a very similar number. What happens? if you don't get all the swages on there. We're going to test with two compressions. This side has three compressions, and this side has two compressions and a little bit of a skirt. Lower. 15K and lower. Yeah, so uh, having less compressions gives you less strength. It's still 10,000 pounds slid out of the sandwich. What happens if you only get one compression? This one actually does look like a dress. I bet we're going to get less strength out of it. That's a lot, lot less. Broken gear. Ooh. Ah. I got three compressions here. They're done really badly. One is on the edge, and the second one is overlapping that, and the third one's on the edge. And I don't have all of the rope captured. For, for being three crimps, that was bad. Having three bad crimps is better than having one, but having two good crimps was stronger. If you don't have a hydraulic crimper, uh, you could use clips. Or if you want adjustability, they have a saddle and a U, and there is a very common phrase across multiple industries on how to place these, never saddle a dead horse. So this being the live load, this being the dead strand, and the saddle is on the live load. When these are compressed, it kinks the cable quite a bit because this is a fairly narrow bend radius versus the saddle. This will be our control, and then we'll see what happens uh, when you break that rule. These generally get installed with a torque wrench. Cue all of the comments about using a torque wrench wrong. So if you'll notice here, this U has 
severely deformed the wire rope. I should deliver 80% of the rated load of the 3 8 cable. But the sleeves will do 100. The sleeves will do 100. So yeah. this is your fixed eye end. Yeah. You tighten the crap out of it and then you use these. Yeah, in a number of scenarios. Like, that's what you do for, like, a guy wire. Uh, Wait, uh, no, no, <laughs> no, it broke on the suede. I thought this video was going to be boring. <laughs> That's super surprising. The other ones we got six, 67, 65, and here we got 60. It could be argued um, <laughs> that I didn't fully uh, oh. bury that, but that's not what failed. It didn't slip. You, that but, would have caused slippage. Yeah, that would have come out if it wasn't fully held. I wonder if this caused a weakness. Uh, it is crazy to me how much that's pinched. I can see why you want to saddle the live horse. Slow-mo? We could review that. Yep, it broke where it looks like it broke. Imagine yeah. that. You should call that with the slow-mo guys. I would love to. Email them <laughs> for me. They don't answer my emails. <laughs> Harder to saddle the dead horse. All right, now let's saddle the dead horse. Do you normally wear gloves when you do this? Uh, I don't. I'm not pansy. <laughs> if you're a pansy like me, we've got gloves that should be $50 for 5 or $6 at hownotto.com, including a whole bunch of Climbing Caving Canyon hardware, some of the best variety and the best prices. We don't do wire rope yet, though. So you can see us starting to choke out the, the live horse here, and we've got the saddle on the dead one. Oh, you guys should collab with that Torque Test channel. Have you seen the Torque Test channel? Uh, I do like that channel a lot. <laughs> horse was moaning i think started to compromise it bobby what gave it away <laughs> <laughs> we saddled a live horse we had failure like right where you'd expect uh it was getting close to our 80 percent uh the concern with this is over a long time it might compromise this more then as one slow pull after you freshly do it. Exactly. I really thought our cable clip failure was going to be slippage. Mm -hmm. So we were going to half the cable clip connections in hopes of seeing them slip. Wow, that's a lot more than I thought. Whoa. That's really interesting. That is coming unlaid. I don't see any broken cables, but we're not far off. And then we had failure at the first clip. The only clip. That's not the failure I was expecting. You thought it was going to slip. I thought it was going to slip. Based on our sample size of one, having the second clip appears to support it a little bit better, giving you a higher result. Two clips upside down, a uh, dead horse saddled, uh, is better than having one clip, according to our sample size of so here is a beautiful hand-drawn chart of all of our data. And we actually tested a whole bunch of cable draws for permanent dog bones for climbers who leave these outside permanently. And we got some interesting results where they broke at the crimp and where they didn't. And you can go check out that video next. Oh, that is a different result. Hey, hey the swage does matter.